Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Konnichiwa and hello everybody. We have been doing a lot of Japanese in our past lessons, learning a lot of new things every time. So today also we will do something new. We will learn about adjectives and also about some important grammatical particles. A new particle will be introduced today and of course your assignments and some new kanji characters. So before we actually start our lesson, well, uh, let us do the assignments. I had given you a number of assignments last time. So, we will start with the first one. The first one is spell the words given below correctly and tick the correct option. So, there are some words over here for you in English and the Japanese spellings are given here. There are lots of them you have to choose the correct one. So, the first one is gakko, a school is a gakko of course as you know. So, which is the correct one? All correct ones are in green. So, gakko, the first one over here. Then the second one is tokidoki, sometimes last week. Senshu, Ski, Moon, Tsuitachi, first, the first of the month, then Tanjobi, birthday. Rokugatsu, June. Mainichi, every day. Oki, and it is please Oki. O, O, Ki. O, O, Ki. E, O, K, E. Please remember that. Then the last one is Gyu Nyu, milk. And again, we have Gyu Nyu as Gyu Nyu. So please remember, it's a long sound, Gyu Nyu. So all answers are given in green. I hope you got it right, all of you. The second assignment is choose the correct kanji characters from the words given below. We have kuchi in the beginning which is again in green, shita this one the second one over here. Then we have the third one over here in green, ashi which is foot. Sen, which is thousand, Roku, first one, Me, the second one, Pun, minutes, Te, first one here, which means hands. Now, the third assignment for you is take the correct kanji character from the brackets given below. So, well you have a full sentence and you are supposed to take the right answer which is going to fit with the sentence which will make it a proper sentence. 
So, Mariko-san no me wa oki desu. Over here, oki desu. Then the second one is Tanaka-san wa Amerika jin de wa arimasen. Tanaka-san wa Nihon jin desu. Honda san wa nijusai desu. And what exactly is nijusai? Nijusai is hatachi. So, the fourth one is Honda san wa hatachi desu. Kono hon wa ikura desu ka? Watashi no tomodachi wa nijugo sai desu. So now you will see that with hatachi you will not use sai and with all the others you will have the counter for age after that which is sai. Indo wa ooki na kuni desu. Indo wa ooki na kuni desu. Nichiyoubi wa yasumi desu. Ashita wa kaiyoubi dewa arimasen. Watashi wa mai nichi gozen goji ni okimasu. Now we have assignment 4 which is match words in group A with meanings in group B. We have been doing this all along. So, today we have a few words over here and let us see what the exact meanings are. Well, maitsuki every month, hiru noon, toki doki sometimes, Kusuri, medicine. Mainichi, every day. So, please I am repeating these words for a specific reason so that you get the pronunciation properly. So, please try to do it with me. Yoru, night. Maiban, every evening. Kesa, today morning. My shoe, every week, as you can see. Kakarimas, time taken. Oyogimas, swim. Yonaka, midnight. So, I hope you got it right. Now, assignment 5 is fill in the brackets with appropriate particles, verbs and question words. So, whatever is proper, please try to do that. Is keiki wa rezoko ni arimasu. Arimasu is for non-living things and ni is the particle used with arimas. Tanaka-san wa uchi ni imas. Imas because of Tanaka-san a living person. Then Gakko ni gakusei ga nan nin imas ka? Nin. Hako ni ringo wa Nanko arimasu ka? Ko is the counter for objects, irregular objects and nin is the counter for people. Watashi wa mai nichi shichiji ni 
ban gohan o tabemasu. So for time, you have ni and for noun over here with verb direct relationship, you have o, particle o. Then tomodachi wa ice cream o tabemasen. Sensei wa doko desu ka? Doko means where, question word where. Sumimasen, watashi wa pizza to pasta o tabemasu. Sumimasen, watashi wa pizza to pasta o tabemasen. Nichiyobi ni pool e ikimashou ka? Shall we go to the pool on Sunday? Jikken shitsu wa nankai desu ka? Nankai is, kai is the counter for stories, for floors in a building. So well, this was your assignment and I hope that you did it properly and you learnt some new things. There was revision as well in the assignment. Now there was a small conversation for you in the previous uh, lesson. This is the conversation. You can now read the conversation and then try to see if these questions you have answered properly. As they are not very difficult, I do not think we need to go over them. You can just do it on your own as you have the conversation right in front of you. Now, today we will do some revision before we actually start on our uh, lesson on adjectives. So, small revision for you. We did Goro last time in our class. Look at the picture over here. There are three clocks. Toke with time. So, well, look at the picture and ask what time a certain activity is done. So, if you look at the time, look at the picture carefully and you will know exactly what is to be done at that time. Hachiji in the morning, well, look at these things. What do you do? What comes to your mind when you look at these things? What is the activity to be? done. When you look at the time here and you look at the food here, look at the sun right on top, what do you do? And then over here, you can see the stars and the moon. The sun is not there anymore. It is all dark, 6 o'clock and what do you do with this food? So, well, let us practice. Nanji goro asa gohan o tabemasu ka? Goro is for time, approximate time. So, nanji goro asa gohan o tabemasu ka? Asa gohan is breakfast. You can tell the time, the time is given over there. Hachiji goro asa gohan o tabemasu. Or mainichi hachiji goro asa gohan o tabemasu. Kino nanji ni hiru gohan o tabemashita ka? Well, nanji de shou. You can see the time over here, it is 12 o'clock. So, juniji goro hiru gohan o tabe mashita. Now, mashita over here is for kino, which is a time expression for yesterday. So, well, kino and thus you have verb in ta form, which is past tense. Now, over here, it is 6 o'clock in the evening. So, well, Mainichi nanji ni ban gohan o tabemasu ka? What time do you have approximately? What time do you have dinner every day? So, what is the answer? Watashi wa mainichi rokuji goro gohan o tabemasu. Ban gohan o tabemasu. So, please try to use goro like this. Goro is plus minus exact time. So, 5 minutes before the time, 5 minutes after the time, approximately around 
a certain time is Goro. You did Masen Deshita last time in the class. We we practiced Watashi wa kino gohan no tabemasen deshita. I did not have food yesterday. So well, now there is a particle which you have done earlier, particle ga, but as a phrase. If you remember, we did this particle as sumimasen. This ga in one of the lessons earlier. So sumimasen this ga. I'm sorry, but so over here the particle ga. This particle ga is used as but. You will see how it is used over here also in a similar manner. Look at the picture and see they are watching a film over here and there are three people sitting. Some of them are watching, someone is sleeping, someone is looking at his or her friend, someone is crying. So well, kino ega o mimashita ka? Did you see the film yesterday? Tomodachi no uchi e ikimashita ga. I went, but ega o mimasen deshita. So well, in a similar manner, like sumimasen desu ga, and something follows. Tomodachi no uchi e ikimashita ga. I went, but mimasen deshita. Now there's another picture over here of a pool. The question is, kino pool e ikimashita ka? So, what should be the answer? Tell me. Similar way. Tell me. Yeah. Ikimashita ga dare mo imasen deshita. You have done this. Dare mo, dare mo means no one. Dare mo imasen deshita. So, that is how you will practice your ga with ta form. Now, we did noun 1 to noun 2 as and. We have done and with sentences as well. Over here, we will practice with things. So, pan to tamago o tabimasu. There is this picture of pan and tamago over here, pan and tamago. So, pan to tamago o tabimasu. Over here, the second picture is empitsu and keshigomu. So, empitsu to keshigomu o kaimasu. And the third picture is of kocha, as you can see with the lemon over here on the spoon, and Japanese green tea, which is ocha. So, kocha to ocha o nomi mas. I drink kocha and ocha also. Also, you can use these with negatives. Pan to tamago o tabemasen. I do not eat bread and eggs. Keshigomu to enpitsu o kaimasen. I will not buy rubber and pencil. And also kocha to ocha o nomimasen. I do not drink tea and coffee. It could be a normal statement that I do not do this and it could also mean that I will not do it. So, both meanings are there. As I had said that we are going to do adjectives today, I will introduce some adjectives here in class today. But before that, I want you to listen to this conversation and see how much you understand from there. Sumimasen, kono hen ni ginko ga arimasen ka? Arimasu yo. Hotel no tonari ni ginko ga arimasu. Hotel no tonari desu ka? Ee, hotel wa soko desu ne. Doko desu ka? Ano ooki tatemono desu yo. Ano tatemono no tonari no shiroi biru wa ginko desu. Aa, wakarimashita. Domo arigato gozaimasu. So well, how much did you understand now? Tell me. I think most of it was understood. 
by all of you. Whatever is left, we will do it right away. I will read this conversation once again for you and let us see how much you understand now. It is between two people A Santo, B San. No Kaiwa this. So, Kaiwa between, dialogue between two people. Sumimasen, kono hen ni ginko ga arimasen ka? Arimasu yo. Hotel no tonari ni ginko ga arimasu. Hotel no tonari desu ka? E, hotel wa asoko desu ne. Doko desu ka? Ano, oki tatemono desu yo. Ano tatemono no, tonari no shiroi biru wa ginko desu. Ah, wakarimashita. Domo arigato gozaimasu. So, a simple dialogue over here. The new thing is particle ga, the word a, oki, and wakarimashita. Kono hen, of course. So, kono hen means around this area, in this area. Sumimasen, kono hen ni, because it is about place, particle ni will follow. Ginko ga arimasen ka. Now, this is a new form which I will do right away with you. Let me first complete this conversation. Arimasu yo. Hotel no tonari ni ginko ga arimasu. This of course, you have done. Tonari means next to. So, ginko is next to the hotel. Hotel no tonari desu ka? Next to the hotel desu ka? E. Hotel wa asoko desu ne? Over there. Doko desu ka? Where is the hotel? Ano oki tatemono desu yo. When you say ano, if you remember, we did kono, sono and ano in our uh, one of the earlier lessons. Kono, sono and ano. The moment you use this plus noun, you are pointing at something and saying you are showing the object, you are showing whatever you are talking about. So, the knowledge of that object or that thing is there with the listener and the person who is speaking. So, over here ano oki tatemono desu yo, this person B is pointing at a building and saying that building over there. Thus, ano oki tatemono, that big tatemono, that big building. It is over there, is not it? Ano tatemono no tonari no shiroi biru wa ginko desu. The building next to that building is a bank. Ah, wakarimashita. I have understood. Thank you very much. So, this is a general simple explanation of the dialogue here. You have it in Japanese and also you have the English translation here. Sometimes this translation may not be exact, may not be word by word. That is because that is not how it would be said in English. It would sound very odd if you try to translate it word by word. So, whatever is to be said in English is put over here. Now, the important thing over here in this dialogue is particle ga, which is new, not as a phrase, but simple particle ga. We have been doing a lot of particles. You have done particle wa, wa, ka, mo, no, yo. We did last time, ne, we did earlier. So, all these particles we have done, we have also done ga earlier. Now, today we will do particle ga. This is a grammatical particle like particle wa. It tells you about your topic or your subject, what you are going to talk about, what you are going to tell about. It could be a person, it could be a thing and it always will generally follow a noun, because that would be your subject of conversation. So, ga 
as you can see is written over here also is a grammatical particle and is used to emphasize the subject one follows the subject or topic directly as particle wa. It is a grammatical particle like particle wa. It is a very, very important particle. Sometimes it is difficult to understand whether to use wa or to use ga in a sentence. Then indicates existence of someone or something at a specific location and if it is location, well the verb is different in animate and inanimate cases as we already know. For example, empitsu ga arimas. Also with particle ga as is the first point over here, it emphasizes the subject, it puts stress, it tries to show that a certain thing does exist. So, empitsu ga arimas. There is an, there is a pencil over there, there is an empitsu over there, hito ga imas. There is a person over there. So, with emphasis, with stress, you try to show that a certain thing or a person is present. Now, we have lot of practice for you over here. Practice saying ga arimas and ga imas. This is a bird, tsuru. Tsuru ga imas. Hito, hito ga imas. Kasa, kasa ga arimas. And you have empitsu. So, should it be arimas or imas? Let us see. Empitsu ga arimas. So, please remember the important thing is for living things it is imas and for non-living things it is arimas. You can practice more, look at the picture and see where to use imas and arimas. So well, what is this? This is a cap, boshi. Now tell me, boshi ga, hai, dozo, boshi ga arimas. Shima uma. Shima uma ga, well what should it be? Shima uma ga imas. Kani, crab. Now what should that be? Kani ga imas or arimas? Kani ga imas. Now, look at this fish over here. Well, it is it's swimming, it is alive and you can see it looks living. Okay. So, what should it be? Sakana ga imas. But in another situation, it could be Well, this person is on the table ready to eat and there is a sakana over here, right here on the plate. So, in such a situation, what is it going to be? Is it going to be imas or is it going to be arimas? Let us see. Sakana ga arimas. So, you have to please remember in such situations where to use imas and where to use arimas. Now, there is a small dialogue over here. Asoku ni hito ga imasu yo, doko desu ka? Kaidan no soba ni imasu. Ah, ano hito desu ka? Ano hito wa Rao san desu. So desu ka? Bikkuri shimashita yo. So, practice the conversation using words given below instead of Rao san. So, all you need to do is to remove Rao san from here and practice all these words given over here. The meanings are right here for you in hiragana, 
and in English. So, we have Kanai, Shujin, Rao san no ok san, Ototo, Musume. So, you can practice with your friend using Kanai instead of Rao san or Shujin over here or Rao san no ok san or Ototo or Musume. And Ano over here, why is Ano used over here? Ano again, because when you look at the person, ah, Ano hito desu ka? Oh, that person over there. So, immediately you know, you have knowledge of that person being present over there, both the listener and the speaker. Thus, Ano hito is used. Now, there was this bikkuri shimashita yo. Now, what does bikkuri shimashita yo mean? Bikkuri shimashita means surprised, shocked and also sometimes afraid. You look at something, you see something, you see something odd, you see something unusual happening or someone just comes and scares you from the back, from behind that is bikkuri shimashita. So, you can look at this picture and see what it is. Bikkuri shimashita yo. Dare, who is scared or who is surprised or shocked and why? Doshite, why? So, well, you can see Tanaka san over here, our friend who is there with us all the time in class. Tanaka san, he is looking a little dazed and a little scared and lost. So, what has happened? Well, he saw something and he was dazed and then he does not know what to do, he is totally baffled. And what did he see? Tanaka san wa. Obake o mimashita, bikkuri shimashita. Obake is a ghost. So, why was he scared? Why was he shocked or surprised? Because he had seen a ghost. So, well, that is what it is. Then we have this over here. You have done this exercise earlier with the wa and ni. If you remember in one of the previous lessons, we did wa and ni. Hon wa, hon wa, soko ni arimas. Okay. Hon wa, subject wa, soko ni, place ni, place ni arimas, arimas because it is a phone. Now, we change it, we put the location over here, location or place ni hon ga arimas, place ni hon ga arimas. So, basically over here you are putting stress on that this horn is present at a certain point. It is present over here at this point. Hon wa, we are talking over here about the book. The book is present over there. Hon wa soko ni arimas. Soko ni hon ga arimas. Hon is present at that point. So, we stress with particle ga, we emphasize with particle ga and show that a certain object or a person is present at a certain point. You can see it from these pictures over here. Koko ni kaban ga arimas. So, koko ni over here at this point kaban ga arimas, not over there. Koko ni kaban ga arimas and asoko ni kaban ga arimas. Over there the kaban is present. Asoko ni kaban ga arimas. Asoko ni hito ga Imas can also be done. You can see that stress and emphasis is important and is shown. Place ni noun ga arimas. As I did just now with you, location ni something or someone ga arimas or imas. What do we have over here? Well, 
you can see there are some pens and sharp pencils. Well, asoko ni nani ga arimasu ka? So, with nani and nan, you can also ask a question. Nan or nani. You can ask a question and say, asoko ni nani ga arimasu ka? Asoko ni dare ga imasu ka? For person, you can say, dare ga imasu ka? Asoko ni nani ga arimasu ka? And asoko ni dare ga imasu ka? So, well, in this exercise we have, soko ni pen ga arimasu. And you can of course, replace soko over here with asoko, koko, tsukue no ue, any of these and many more. You can try these conversations, practice them with your partner. And for pen, you can replace it with kaban, keshigomu, empitsu. We have it right here. Let us see. Asoko ni nani ga arimasu ka? Asoko ni kaban ga arimasu. Koko ni keshigomu ga arimasu ka? Hai, koko ni keshigomu ga arimasu. Or, koko ni nani ga arimasu ka? Koko ni keshigomu ga arimasu. Then the third one is, we have something on the table. So, tsukue no ue ni pen ga arimasu ka? Enpitsu ga arimasu ka? Tsukue no ue ni pen ga arimasu. Tsukue no ue ni enpitsu ga arimasu. So, you can use ni and ga. This is a pattern. This is a specific way of saying. So, please use it and learn it like that. Place ni noun ga arimasu. Now, place ni noun ga imasu. As I just told you, well, we have someone walking. So, inu to rao san ga imasu. They are present. Inu to rao san. Inu and rao san. We did to last time in our previous lesson. So, inu noun 1 to noun 2 ga imasu. Then we have some children playing over here in the pool, in the river probably. So, well, pool ni kodomo tachi ga imasu. Pool ni kodomo tachi ga imasu. So, you have again ni and ga combination. Then this is a classroom. So, well, kyoshitsu ni gakusei ga imasu. And the fourth one, we have a lot of people in the room. So, heya ni hito ga imasu. So, you can practice this, look at things, look at pictures and try to see where things are placed and say that in Japanese. Place ni noun ga arimasu or imasu. Give short answers, you have done short answers. So, just a revision over here. Place ni noun ga imasu. Jimushitsu ni rao san ga imasu ka? Hai, imasu or iie imasen. For jimushitsu, you can replace this with gakko, kaisha, uchi, daidokoro. Uchi is house and daidokoro is kitchen. Gakko and kaisha you already know and rao san you can replace with taro kun, tanaka san, neko and oksa and practice this with your partner. Then, in a certain place you have some things. For example, in a school you could have a library, you could have a ground, you could have um, a kitchen or you could, you could have a dining room or a canteen, cafeteria. There are a lot of places, very famous places in your town, maybe in your country. So, in a certain place, you have something else. Place ni, noun place ga arimasu. So, gakko ni toshokan ga arimasu. Gakko ni groundo ga arimasu. Kaisha ni 
食堂があります。学校にカフェテリアがあります。インドにタージマハルがあります。Or アグラにタージマハルがあります。So you can use like this also not only for people and for things, for places as well you can use arimas. Now, as I had said, we will do adjectives. Adjectives are called keoshi in Japanese and unlike their English counterparts, Japanese adjectives are a little, little different. We all know adjectives are words which tell you more about no, nouns, give you information about nouns. In, in Japanese, there are two kinds of adjectives, the I adjectives and the Na adjectives. Now, I adjectives are adjectives which are of Japanese origin. They are words which originally belong to Japan and Na adjectives are words which are of foreign origin or they are words which are of Chinese origin. Now, of course, you have a lot of foreign words which are being used as adjectives. For example, you have beautiful, you have uh, elegant, handsome. So, these are words which are being used with Japanese words as na adjectives and there are i adjectives which always end in an i. For example, we have o ki, o ki is big, large, huge. Then you have chisai, which is small. For example, the spelling is chi sai. So, you will see that all the time i adjectives will end in i or e as we would say in Japanese in hiragana. Now, I will write a few of these adjectives for you over here and then you can see. O ki O ki So, you can see chi sai chi sai Na gai. Na gai. Na gai is something which is long like a log or maybe like a um, you could say a long tree going straight up or something which is which is long like this like a cylinder that is long going straight. Na gai. Lengthy is na gai. So, we have these adjectives given over here i adjectives and na adjectives i adjectives are true adjectives and na adjectives are pseudo adjectives and of foreign origin these are some i adjectives for you oki as i just wrote it down over here oki chisai nagai then we have some um, colors as i adjectives shiroi shiroi akai akai and so many of them are listed over there so we'll just go through it oki means big huge large Chi sai, small, and chi sai. Please remember the pronunciation is chi e sai, chi sai. Then shiroi is white, akai, as you can see, is red. Aoi, a o e, a o e, a o e, aoi. Kiroi is yellow. Kuroi is black, 
chiroi is brown. So, these are some of the adjectives that we are going to do here. Now, what is this? This is a te, te is hand, o ki. Chisai, chisai through the microscope, through the lens you see, chisai, and then you have something huge, o ki, which is huge and big. Zosan is o ki. Zosan wa o ki desu. Now you can practice colors that we had done earlier. You see a red flower, akai hana. Pink hana. Kiroi hana. Aoi hana. Hana. So, you can practice your colors over here with this. Then you also have some more. All of this is green. So, green is midori, midori desu and midori is also greenery, please remember. Then ki, of course, you can see ki is tree over here. Ki to happa, happa is leaves. Kito happa wa midori desu, kasa wa murasaki desu. So, simple sentences also you can make. Now, as we have been doing kanji all along, we will do some kanji over here today. Chisai, chisai, chisai means small as I told you. And it comes from a stem like this, which you shave from here and make it look small. Okay. So, 1, 2 and 3. It is a 3 stroke character. Once again, 1, 2 and 3. See, when you write with pen, or with brush as they do in calligraphy with Chinese characters with these pictograms. You, you hold your brush like this and when you make a straight line, you need to leave it a little. Thus, this comes because if you try to leave it like this, then there will be a blot over there on the paper and it looks very, very bad. So, when it is like this, this and this, you leave it, it becomes Chi sai, chi e sai. Once again, chi sai, and then it's a three-stroke character. Then we have o ki, o ki. A straight line over here. Ichi you have done, and you have also done hito. So easy way of remember remembering o ki would be like this hito and you cut it. So, once again for you from this side I will make it hai ichi and like this o ki o ki e o ki. So, please remember two of these simple characters over here. O ki is also a three stroke character. So, you have chi sai o ki. You look at this character anytime even without the hiragana, you will understand that this means small and the second one means big. Then we have a third one over here which is shiroi. Now you have done this, if you remember. This is not the way of actually learning a character, but anyway, you have done this character which means day or nichi, just need to add one more stroke over here and it means shiroi. 
as we are doing these characters in a non-Japanese environment, it is easy to learn characters like this, though actually the method of learning is very, very different and the stroke order is like this please, like this. You make a stroke over here, 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, it is a 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 stroke character, she, ro, e. So, once again 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, it is shiroi. Now, we have some words for you, otona with these characters, these new characters that you are doing today, oki, otona, oki hito is an adult, otona. Ono, a large field, a big field. Taishi, Taishi is an ambassador. Daiji, Daiji is some thing which is important or some person who is important. Then Koya is a hut, a small room, Koya, a hut and then Koishi is a small stone. So, you have these new words, you can learn them and you can make sentences out of these characters and practice. Now, this is the stroke order as you can see I told you, well you have this stem over here and you try to shave it a little from here, make it small, look small and then it becomes like this chisai and the order you can see is like this, then one and then two. So, it is a three stroke character, chisai. Then we have oki, a man standing with his hands and feet spread apart makes you look very, very big and that is oki. So, you have ichi, ni and then san from here, not from here please, but after this. So, that makes it oki, big. Now, we have been practicing hiragana, how to write hiragana. So, sa, we have done two sets. Now, this is the third set, sa, shi and you can see it is a single stroke from top till here. It is like this, like L in English, sa, shi, su. and so. So, is a little complicated, well you make like this and then make a te over here. Now, you have it all in front of you, in one go you can see all of them together, sa, shi, su, say and so and the stroke order is right there. So, you can practice it at home and make blocks, get a square notebook and write in the square in the center a maths notebook and write it properly and you will be able to get your stroke order correctly over there. Some vocabulary that we have done, the meanings are given here on the right side in black and then you have the hiragana written here in the center. I will just read out, kono hen, bikkuri, toshokan, 
you can practice with me, you can repeat after me also. Daidokoro, otaku, uchi, kaidan, musume, musuko. So now my part finishes actually and now your part begins. You have to do the assignments now. There are quite a few assignments. Fill in the blanks with appropriate adjectives, the adjectives that we have done in class. Then we have fill in these blanks with kanji characters and the word is given in English over here, over here in the end in black and you have to write the kanji character for it. Then write hiragana, katakana for kanji characters and words given in column A. This practice is important because just speaking is not enough. You need to be able to read the language, also to write and understand. So as we have three scripts, you have to do all three scripts. We will do it slowly, there is no rush and every time if you keep writing and practicing, it is much easier. Then choose the correct reading for the kanji characters given below. Now you have these characters here, these kanji characters, kanjis that we have done. So the readings are given and you have to tick the correct reading for the kanji character. So we have so many readings, I will not read it out. You have to do that part and write the correct reading. Now give the color for all these things. Remon to juice wa nani iro desu ka? Over here the question is given. Then you have to ask your friend for this one, for, for this one, for this one, this and this. Ask the color of these things and let us see whether you are able to ask and answer properly. Well, now we have a small listening comprehension for you. Just listen to the comprehension and then I am sure you will be able to answer the questions given later. The conversation is between two people A and B. I will read it out aloud. Just listen carefully. Yoku kite kudasai, minasan. Ikkai yomimasu kara, minasan kite kudasai. Indo wa ooki kuni desu. Indo ni takusan kojo ga arimasu. Kino watashi wa kaisha no tomodachi to issho ni kuruma no kojo e ikimashita. Kono kojo wa ooki desu ne. Kojo ni shain wa nan nin imasu ka? 130 nin desu. Kojo wa mainichi nan dai kuruma o tsukurimasu ka? 25 ka 30 dai desu. Ah, sou desu ka? Ja, mai tsuki 800 ka 900 dai desu ne. Sou desu. Kojo no naka ni shokudo ga arimasu ka? Iie, arimasen. Shain wa chikaku no cafeteria e ikimasu. So well, a simple conversation for you. There are a few questions listed. Try to answer those. And I think it's enough for today. There are a lot of new things that you did, a lot of new adjectives you learnt. You learnt particle ga. You learnt I adjectives, new vocabulary for you, some new kanji characters. So practice those, try to do them, try to write hiragana, try to write the characters and we will continue our adjectives in our next class as well. Mata aimashou. Thank you.